All right, there you go. That's what it looks like here this morning. <laughs> a little snowy. A little snowy. And I'm behind in a little amount of projects. <laughs> there you go. That's my place this morning. Oh, now it's Adventure Dog with a squeaky toy. Bobby. What are you doing? Hmm? Three inches of snow I think it is out there. Somewhere around there. Nothing too much. Not that too tough to deal with. But enough to stop some projects, right? Now, so is everybody learning out there or what? It's funny, I've um, as been going along in this channel. Obviously, no doubt, been weeding out people, people who are really, truly looking for the truth of what's going on out there, and that's fine. Seems to be a bit of a theme in North America, though. There's a lot of people out there that don't want to know the true truth about much, unfortunately, but that's okay. But for those of you that are here that are soaking up this shit, something else, isn't it? Something else. It's funny though, I'm sure there's a whole pile of people out there that are hearing what they don't want to hear when it comes to the truth of, the possible potential truth of, of uh, what's going on in the forests and mountains of the planet and other places, right? They don't want to hear it. But, you know, I skim through some of the comments and it's so bizarre. I, I can get frustrated just because I have a low tolerance for BS. Can be frustrating. You know, when we share what some of our generous contributors have shared from their private lives in the forest, in the rural places, with these people and more, and you share these absolute bizarre frickin' stories that make you go, holy cow. And then for me, when I zoom through the comments, the other time I see somebody go, oh, that's just a clickbait thumbnail. And it just makes me go, oh my God, really? What are you doing here? Seriously, that whole email, all that information, and all your brain says is to lash out because of a frickin' thumbnail photo. And that's quite common. I even get people emailing me about that. But anyways, in case some of those people are here, just so you know, I'll probably do a count on the videos. What is there, over a thousand? Over a thousand of them, and when you load up a YouTube video, it will choose, I think, three different choices from your video what to use for a thumbnail, or you upload your own. I don't have a thousand photos on my phone and I don't have any time and I don't really give a shit about the thumbnail, but <laughs> the funny part about it is um, when it gives a choice, it'll just be a random clip from the video. So I could be like sitting cross-eyed er, and that's one of the choices for the, for the thumbnail, right? But anyways, that's where the thumbnail photos come from. I got no time to screw around. I got no time to search and dig and I got a handful on you. I'll grab it and load it up. And a lot of people, I've noticed a lot of other people will say, well, here's some stuff from, say, the, the, the people of the group in Arizona, or the Owlman, or other people, some other First Nations people, and all they will comment with, that's BS, what a load of crap. Okay, since you know that, then why don't you please, as well as, besides lashing out, comment with the truth of what's going on there. Tell us what's really going down. <laughs> you know what I mean? That can be frustrating for me, too is when people just lash out and say, that's bullshit, what a bunch of idiots, how can you believe that? If you're gonna be bold enough to make such a statement like that, you better back it up and drop down the truth than what you know as the truth and what we're missing. You know what I mean? You can be frustrated, right? And that's why I always say, to try to eliminate all that conflict, take from it what you will or leave it. It's your ride, it's your private ride, it's your private puzzle piece, Take from it what you will or leave it, but, but don't blow a gasket. And it's amazing how many people just can't pick that up. <laughs> it's crazy. Anyway, there's my little bit of a tiny rant. Now, a uh, quick mention that I keep forgetting to mention is people who I listen to currently, maybe some people I don't, I don't know if I should bother that part, but I uh, came across an individual a while back and I kind of glanced at a few of his videos the other time wondering who's this guy and then finally one of his videos caught my attention. I actually listened to it. His name is Sean Ryan, all right? 
I have listened to a handful of his videos now and he is definitely worthy of time in case you are curious. So I will put a, a link to Sean Ryan's channel in the uh, comment section below the video. God, I hate it when the phone keeps on. The screen locks out again and again and again. Another man who I find I listen to a lot, who I listen to a lot these days is, is Alexander Mercurus. Mercurus, M-E-R-C-O-U-R-I-S on YouTube. A very intelligent man. Dedicates a shit pile of his time to due diligence. He has contacts all throughout Europe, um, in government, in military, all over the place. He's a, a, um, a very, very intelligent, non-biased, matter of fact, get to the straight goods, the points, and share it with all of us. And he has dedicated basically his whole life to doing that. He should be commended for that. And uh, I listen to him a lot. He is the other half of the other channel I've shared possibly before, which is called the Duran. All right. So just so you know, that is who I currently listen to a lot. And uh, Sean Ryan, I definitely will be thumbing through a lot of his past videos and seeing what interests me. And I'm going to be listening to him too. He's definitely on the same page. And uh, these are independent what you might call journalists, independent. They tell the truth. They hold no punches. There's no bullshit. They are not swayed in any way whatsoever. And they deliver it to all the people. And they dedicate a pile of their time to accumulating the facts and the goods. So there you go. I thought I better pass that on. Anyway, those two, uh, those two channels I find are very, very helpful to society today, is what I'm trying to get across to you guys. It's my take on it. Teach their own take from William Will Leave it. But in the meantime, I got some more voices to get heard. There's a lot of acknowledgement coming up. And um, just so you guys know, the this channel, as soon as you start sharing knowledge, I don't know if it's the, the closer we're getting to truth or what, but uh, Google is absolutely hammering on this channel. And uh, I'm getting numerous people are letting me know that they've been unsubscribed. Numerous people are getting unsubscribed. Nobody's nobody's finding these new videos in their what is it in their feed? However it works. So there's nothing I can do about it here. It's just the way it is. Uh, the truthers get hammered on as soon as you say one word out of line or a title out of line or whatever it is. Um, they that alarms them and their and their algorithms or whatever it is, and uh, they try to prevent people from seeing the channel. That's what's been going on <laughs> a lot. Oh well, nothing I can do about it, but keep pressing on. I'm not gonna change shit for anybody. Now, let's listen to this. This is titled, Hawaii Forest Ghost. Hey Steve, my name is Christian. Big fan of your channel, sorry for the length. Never apologize for that, my man. Being that I'm from Hawaii, this doesn't have anything to do with Bigfoot or the savvy as they don't pop into our island chain as far as I know. Actually, we've had a few reports. I figured you may find this interesting though, and to be honest, I just want to share the experience with a group of like-minded individuals after keeping it to myself for so many years. I'm 32 now, and this happened to me around the age of 16. I grew up in a small town on the island of Oahu, squeezed between the ocean and a long cliff slash mountain. I lived across the street from where this occurred. This is in the forest that butted up against the property of one of my best friend's family. Myself and three or four of my friends got a hold of some wood and built a deck under a huge kia tree. Q tree? Q tree? Q tree? K-E-A-W-E tree that we put a really big camping tent on. We called it the base. We had a bare mattress on a box spring in there, a coffee table, and two old seats that we took from an abandoned van we had found on the roadside. This experience happened probably six months after we set it up. My friend and I were sitting in a tent, as usual. I was sitting on the mattress and my buddy was playing a new song he'd been learning on the van seat closest to the tent door. The other seat sat empty to his right in the corner of the tent. We were there for a while, passing the guitar back and forth, but as he was sitting there playing and showing me the chords of, for this song, the sun was shining on the tent wall behind him and the shadows of the tree branches were gently swaying on the wall. This part is a bit hard to explain, but as I was listening to the guitar, this specific part of a branch shadow 
on the tent wall above the empty van seat caught my eye as it looked like there were two eyes on it, swaying with the shadow. As soon as I looked directly at the two eyes, a face started to materialize and within probably five seconds, there was a fully materialized kid sitting in the chair looking at me. I'd never felt or experienced anything like this before then or since. A chill ran down over my body and I got that feeling like my entire skin caught on fire. My eyes started welling up with tears and I couldn't breathe. The kid looked to be about 10 or 11 and wore a very distinct outfit. He was in a brown button-up vest and a white shirt underneath with a super pronounced sharp pointed collar. He had blonde hair combed neatly to the side and pale white skin. He locked eyes with me as I sat there frozen, but trying as hard as I could to breathe while I basically started convulsing. My friend looked up and freaked out, threw the guitar on the bed and grabbed my arm to pull me out of the tent. He was screaming, was that a ghost? What the F was that? As we started running through the woods, but I still couldn't get any breath into me to respond. I felt like I was choking. The woods were a tangled mess of tightly packed Hikoa trees. Oh, no. Halikoa trees? Halikoa trees. Kiowa trees and big patches of head high grass. We ran, tumbled straight through it instead of taking the tight little trail we normally use, headed back to our friend's property to get out. When we finally broke out of the forest onto the property, our other friend was actually there washing his mom's Tacoma in the driveway. It wasn't a surprise to him that we were coming out of there from the hangout spot, but his first words to us as we ran towards him was, holy shit, what did you guys see? The friend I was with yelled, ghost. We ran right past him to the main driveway, jumped on our bikes, and without even saying anything, rode in opposite directions to our houses. <clears throat> Excuse me. This was in broad daylight, probably two or three in the afternoon. I rode straight back to my house, jumped in bed, and just cried. I couldn't shake the feeling. I felt gross and completely creeped out, and it's still hard to explain the feeling it put me in. As a teenager growing up in that area, and at the time we prided ourselves on being tough and strong, and it was completely out of character for me, but this experience completely shook me. I have no explanation for it to this day. The experience can end there if you ever want to share it with your followers, but if it isn't too long, there's more that may or may not be connected to this. About a month later, four of us were exploring in the forest, probably a quarter mile straight up towards the mountain from the base, which was actually just a steep 200 foot overgrown rock cliff that ran the length of our town above the forest, and we found a small cave. It was at ground level about knee high, and probably six foot wide. It looked like it went in, in a good ways. We were all super surprised that we had never seen it before because we thought we knew every inch of this forest. Just to the right of the cave was a small pile of rocks that had crumbled down from the cliff and a piece of bone was laying between the two of, two of the rocks. I thought it was part of a boar skull since we very often found them and always brought them back to the base and had a pretty large collection at that point. I grabbed it, pulled it up from between the rocks and it turned out to be the front of a human skull. <laughs> no way. The back was broken off, but it was the forehead both eye sockets, nose, and teeth. As soon as we all realized what it was, it felt like I got hit with an electric shock. I dropped the skull and we were all losing our minds at the find. My heart felt like it was exploding out of my chest and I was shaking uncontrollably. We actually all got down and looked into the cave afterwards and saw the rest of the skeleton was inside. The rib cage was closest to the front of the opening and we could see other bones tucked farther back in. They looked old. The strange part of this was that less than a week later we went back to see the skeleton with some other friends and when, they, and when we got to the spot, the cave was completely filled in and in with small rocks that fit together perfectly. Like a tight fitting rock wall completely filling the cave opening without any mortar and directly in front of it was a tea, T-I, plant that wasn't there before but didn't look like it was planted recently. It looked like it had grown out of the ground right there. Tea leaves are used to wrap around stones to be left in the forest as offerings to the spirits, just as some context as to the plant that was there. 
this area was behind my friend's property and was really only accessible through the property and we still have no explanation as to how anyone could have come within the week to wall up the cave and plant the T plant, that's T-I plant, or have even known that we found the skeleton. Having that happen paired with us, having the kid materialize in the tent with us is almost too strange to not be connected somehow. I never really believed in the Menehune before then, small mythical forest people in the Hawaiian, in the Hawaii, known for their skill in building perfect rock walls overnight in Hawaiian mythology. No way, that's really interesting. But it's hard to imagine anything but them knowing we found the skeleton and sealing it back up in the cave. Again, I'm sorry for the length if you decide to share this, but I've but I've had this inside me for so many years and hearing from all your followers inspired inspire me to finally get it out. Aloha, Christian. Wow, that's quite the story, man. That's definitely a first, right? Very interesting, and I wonder if that is going to possibly trigger somebody else from around that area to write in. I do know that we have had a few Sasquatch experiences written in from, excuse me, the Hawaiian Islands for sure. Hey, hey, no. Ruby, don't chew on that. Hold on a sec. No. You know, we don't, uh, we don't normally cater to the ghost stories. There's a lot of ghost stories out there. I know people have seen ghosts, and I've actually firmly believe I've had one experience with a ghost. Hey! Out. Oh. Damn dog. But if you, uh, I mean, obviously me, the curious guy, especially when it comes to the woods, the mountains, the forest, anywhere, I don't care what continent it's on, or islands, or whatever. Um, can you go back there and, and videotape that? And show it to us? Or, or pictures or anything? Is there any way you can do that? That would be really, really crazy to see that, wouldn't it? And then maybe, I don't know, I mean, I don't know, maybe talk to the uh, native elders in the area possibly and look for a little guidance of what to do. I mean, is it bad taboo to take that wall down? Is there a, is there a young boy that was possibly murdered, and stuffed in that hole that needs to be uh, acknowledged, found? I don't know, maybe, right? Maybe look into that, talk to the, talk to the elders in the area for sure and get some advice from them. And uh, maybe if you could, take a picture or videotape that thing. <laughs> Share it to us, man. I, I'm curious to hear about that myself. Anyway, I hope that helped you getting that off your chest. That's quite the experience, man, for kids. What an adventure. <clears throat> Excuse me. Crazy. All right. Good morning, Steve. Whether you say my name or not, doesn't bother me at all. I grew up going to our camp in the Allegheny National Forest. Every summer we would go there for two weeks. Our camp was on the Allegheny River. My dad taught me how to fish, and that was all it took. Next 50 years of loving to fish the river and trout streams in the area, and there's quite a few of them. Often got weird vibes, but never thought about it until I started listening to the stories that you read. Been listening for quite a while now, and I, and I too am searching for answers to a most terrifying encounter was something I can't explain. This is where it gets better. This happened in the suburbs of Pittsburgh, PA. Let's just say the South Hills area. I lived with my aunt on a somewhat country road. We had a patch of woods behind the house that were about 400 yards wide and maybe a half mile long. Old growth for most part, giant oak trees. Anyway, it was summer and I always had my bedroom window open. My aunt was from Italy, wonderful woman, God rest her soul, been gone for seven years now. But she didn't believe in air conditioning, and it gets pretty hot, so I opened up the windows. Something woke me from a deep sleep. I often heard scratching and figured it was just squirrels because we'd find acorns in the attic. This wasn't scratching, it was heavy breathing, and I mean really deep breaths. I could hear it walking outside right by my window, which was ground level. You could literally open the window and step out into the yard. I was frozen with fear. I knew something just walked right by my window and it was bipedal and it had to be enormous. I can't forget the sound of it as it went past my room. I wished I could, but it sticks with me every day. What happened next really freaked me out. It probably was about two minutes later that I heard this howl I've only heard in movies. A freaking werewolf is the only way I can describe it. No shit, it came from an old farm that was across the road about 800 yards. I got out of bed, locked my window. I was shaking so bad from that howl. 
I didn't see what went by my window. What I heard is enough to know that you're right. The government doesn't tell us what we should know about. I think of all the weird shit that I ignored while camping in the National Forest. It just kept me thinking, these aren't animals out at night. I slept like a baby while in my tent. Ever since I heard that howl, I don't go out after dark. Nor do I go camping anymore. And like you say, I certainly didn't wake up this morning and make this stuff up just for you to read. No doubt, man. No doubt. If you're ever near Pittsburgh, look me up. I've long since moved away from that area, only about 30 minutes from there. Now I have state game lands in my backyard. Whitetail, turkeys, coyotes, all kinds of animals in my backyard. So what else? Don't know. But my neighbor down the road has a Sasquatch figure in his yard. Keep up the good work. God bless you and your family. I have a surprise for you. When I finish it, I'll send you. I'll send. You may get a laugh out of it. It's a parody for the club and no return. As soon as, I, as soon as I finish recording, you'll be the first to hear it outside my wife. Hello. Later and have a great day. Okay, man, appreciate you. I've been to Pittsburgh a few times. Years back, had a lot of fun in that crazy, in that crazy uh, city. Say stories for another time. Yeah, it's the sounds, right? So uh, there you go. You can relate to when I try it. I mean, how do you, how do you deliver to the people to get across the impact of these sounds that you and many people heard, right? Like you said, it sticks with you every day. Getting the living shit scared out of us sticks with us pretty good, right? It's weird how it etches into your frickin' brain. Being terrified out of your wits, for real. And especially from something you don't know what the hell it was. But how many people we had right in about these, these howls. The woman, blood-curdling scream turning into a low, drawn-out howl growl. It originally started off sounding like a woman getting murdered. It's about as terrifying as it gets, right? Crazy, man. Keep me posted with whatever comes your way, or us anyway, right? Share the knowledge, keep it flowing. I'm glad you wrote in. Now, who's next? Man, that bait fridge in the background is humming away, it drives me bonkers. It's funny how the background sounds drive me insane. <laughs> Excuse me. Another puzzle piece with illustration. Steve, I want to thank you and all the members of the round table for taking the fear out of my continuous encounters with Sasquatch in my life. I've learned so much from your platform. I've had encounters since I was 11 and I'm now 80. I have a friend who has, an incredible, who has incredible experiences with a family of Sasquatch for over 30 years. And he has wanted me to join him on at least one of, these ex one of his excursions. But I don't need any more exposure than I have now. The puzzle piece I want to share with you today is one of his experiences with these beings. I illustrate all of them as he shares them with me. I've attached this illustration here. I was moved to send this email because you're making the connection between Sasquatch and UFOs. The Owl Man talked about how the Sasquatch gets abducted a lot and they hate those encounters. On Skinwalker Ranch, the owner saw a Bigfoot drop to the ground out of a portal in the sky. That's actually uh, three scientists were standing there too, and I've been in contact with one of them. The scientists that are there now are also getting the connection to Bigfoot and UFOs. The illustration I have attached needs some explaining. My friend told me that the orange ring comes up out of the ground and I should not show the top part of the being as it has not materialized yet. I drew it in anyway as, I, as it would look weird. The orange orb is seen most commonly with Bigfoot, and the blue one is a probe of sorts. Steve, thank you. Your channel's helped me so much. If you're seeing lights in the woods, you may be getting a bit deeper into the rabbit hole. Enjoy, enjoy the journey, Judy Benjamin. Thanks, Judy. That's quite the illustration. You got some skill there. Wow. Okay, well, I'll share that here. And maybe I'll even use it for the, the thumbnail photo for this video. How's that sound? That's really interesting. Judy, it sounds like uh, between you and your friend, there might be a pile of untouched knowledge sitting there that we haven't, we haven't been able to sponge off of you yet. If you want, um, if you wish, and you have something that you think may help people 
maybe uh, email me again and send it to us. All right, I appreciate that. I know some everybody else would too. If you want, that'd be great. And we appreciate what you just sent. Australian follow-up. G'day, Steve. You can call me Forest Guy. That's what I used to go by on most Sasquatch slash Yowie slash Big Hairy Epper boards when I used to post. Today, 22nd February 23, here, day before I think, for you, you read an email from Adam in Australia. One quick thing, the guy he was talking to emphasized that almost purple skin coloring of the guy he saw. This isn't uncommon. Some of our really isolated First Nation people are so dark brown it seems to have purple tinges. As to his point about Aboriginals fighting hairy people, yep, is even in a children's book I had at primary school. Turamuli, the giant quinkin, pick attached. The whole book is also on YouTube if you want to share a link. I recommend it. Other books in this series also discuss the different types of not First Nations people that the people interacted with, two in particular, the nice Quinkins and the smaller jokester type. It's interesting that all three types are not only still reflected in indigenous teachings slash warnings, but they also show up in reported accounts from us white fellows. In regards to earlier occupation of the continent, there's a heap, but for starters, I've attached a pic of the Talgay skull, T-A-L-G-A-I skull, housed in Sydney Museum, dated at 13,000 plus years old. It doesn't look homo sapiens to me. Adam also mentioned cave art of dinos. I've seen nothing like that. Dinos, I'm guessing that's dinosaurs. I've seen nothing like that, and I've looked, but there is a heap of artwork of First Nations people encountering plate Pleistocene era megafauna. I have my own encounters, etc., but I need to type it all up. This is just some more info on what you've already shared. Cheers, FG. Thanks, man. Uh, there's no picture of a skull here, but those are interesting, interesting pictures for sure, and I'll share them here in the video, man, all right? So, you want to share more? Send it. <laughs> Send it, I'll share it, all right, man? I appreciate you and your knowledge, your generosity. Interesting pictures, right? All right, next one's titled Bigfoot Night Terrors. Hello, Steve. Hope that you, family, and all your furry slash hairy friends, be they two-legged or four-legged, are, are well. My name is Chris. I'm from South Wales in the UK. I've been a fan of your channel for quite a while now and always look forward to your videos. Keep up the good work. I have never had a Bigfoot encounter, not a physical one at least, but when I was a kid, which would be going back into the early 70s, I used to have these reoccurring terrifying terrors of a huge black hairy creature with red eyes. It wasn't until many years later when a Bigfoot film was released that I realized what the hell I was dreaming about. That's a little alarming, right? Lots of a lot of people report that same thing. I couldn't understand how I was having nightmares about these creatures, even though I had never seen a particular a picture, sorry, even though I'd never seen a picture or a film of one or knew anything about them. My parents' home backs onto a large ancient woodlands. A pathway runs up the LH side of the house and then up on the LH side of the backyard. At the end of the backyard, there's a single street light. The path then turns 90 degrees left and descends into the woods. The single street light switches off at 11 p.m. and plunges the area into total darkness. This is a brief description of the reoccurring dream. I dreamed that I'd woken up at around 3 a.m., face up in bed and totally paralyzed. My bedroom would be in near total darkness apart from the very faint glow of moonlight coming through the window and there would be total silence and then it would start. Way off in the distance I would hear faint footsteps working their way up the path through the woods. It was then that the feeling of terror would hit me like it did so many times before over the years. I tried as hard as I could to reach for the bedside lamp switch, only once did I ever make it in my dream, but the ball burst. I would also try to call out for my parents, nothing ever came out. All the while, these footsteps would continue through the woods, getting louder and louder and heavier as I got closer. 
when the beast reached the lamppost at the bottom of the backyard, it would turn towards the house and I could hear it s snorting as it got closer and feel the vibration from each step as it passed the side of the house. Then it would make its way around to the front of the house, destroy the front door, kill the dog, make its way to the bottom of the staircase. The next bit terrified me the most. I used to dread it. When it ascended the stairs, it sounded like someone running up the stairs at superhuman speed wearing huge concrete boots. The noise was incredible and terrifying. It was then that I would see this huge black beast with red eyes at the bottom of my bed, which resulted in me crashing out of the dream, shaking with fear and gasping for air. This dream was, this dream very rarely changed, but the only terrifying one off change that stands out to me is when the beast lifted me out of my bed and devoured part of my leg. When I came out of this particular dream, I nearly ran straight through the bedroom door. As you can imagine, these dreams traumatized me at a very young age and it still affects me to this day. That sucks. Another snippet, snippet of info that you may find interesting and re relevant. On one occasion, a UFO was seen taking off just a few hundred yards from my parents' house. It was reported by two police officers. This is in the very late 70s. This area of Wales is an area known as the Welsh UFO Triangle. It's the name of a book. All the best, Chris. Holy shit, Chris. Well, your dream, lots of people have reported the same thing. Not that we're a dream channel, but it's uh, it sounds like it must be relevant to what's going on, right? Many people have reported the same flavored dream, but what is very alarming, possibly to many, is the fact that your dream absolutely parallels true life experiences with people. What's up with that, right? It sucks it's traumatized you all your life. I guess it would anybody, right? That flavor of dream and that reality of of, of a dream, the, re the reality flavor that came with that dream. I hope you hearing this being read here helps you out, man. Crazy. Appreciate you. Be safe out there. All right, who's next? This is titled The Owl Man. Yate, Mr. Rizdal. Reference, quote, Owl Man's end quote statement, Hispanic. They are not old ones, but they are. But depending on descendancy, a Hispanic is a European identification forced to speak Spanish. Mesoamericans who have, ha who have thousands of years tied to indigenous people. Spanish is the Euro-linguistic speech, not an American dialect. So the Sabe speak truth. If his niece are with Mexican heritage, if his niece are with Mexican heritage, indicates Yakui or Terra Humira, Terra Humira, or Tabasco, or Mixtec Indians, or Zapotec Indian, or Aztec, or even some of my own people, the Mimbre Apache descendant, speak Spanish, English, and French along with native tongue. This is how Mexico chose its name by combining the multi indigenous clans to make the name of Mixtexico, or Mexico. If south of there you have Olmec, or others, traditions 5,000 years old. Sabe, see his niece or daughter's true selves, quote, the old ones, end quote. I started laughing when he said Hispanic Spanish as a language, but these people are not from Spain. I am from the predominantly English-speaking part of America, so they say I am Englanic. No. Or, if a native is from Quebec, they say he, she is frantic. Maybe that's, maybe, but that's not related to their blood. They're trying to teach the owl man a lesson. The old ones indicate cultural contact with this indigenous people from which his daughters come, and it is not Spain. But in order to see truth, you have to drop to, you have to drop the ethno-European thought and think like an American Indian. And that is what the Sabe sees. No preconceived notion from the conquest, societally dominant grouping. 
Ashinabene is Asinabene, as Asinaboin, and Denata is Denata, and Cree is Cree, and so on. Different nations within nations. The Sabe sees that in his Hispanics, the old ones, the history that has been suppressed for control. Tell him to ask. For me, it's hard to say owl man because in my culture that represents death. Ooh. But to lighten the load, we must try to understand, just as some Europeans tried to understand my ancestors. And unfortunately, some of us from our parents, and unfortunately, some took us from our parents very young. My 120 year old grandfather being one. Indian schools, and you spoke about it. 280 Indians killed and buried in a hole with no respect. I literally cry. And up to 30 years in law enforcement, to do that is a hard thing. Thank you for telling the truth about that. Who is taking the Aboriginal women going? Cartel, human trafficking, and yes, maybe some others. And as usual, like Jewish blood, indigenous blood is cheap to our governments. God bless, Steve. Walk with the corn pollen path of Hoz, Hoz Ho, Hoz Ho, H O Z H O. Thanks, my man. Appreciate you and your emails you send me. Absolutely. Don't stop. And uh, uh, it's interesting. It's good knowledge. I love hearing from the First Nations people. I, I am absolutely behind on sharing a lot of things from people connected to me as well as others. And uh, there's been a lot going on here in my community, the First Nations community, when it comes to the people that have been taken. And I have a couple of e very important emails I need to share. They're going to be a little hard to. They're going to be a little hard to hear. All right, but the story needs to be shared, and I'm going to do it. Um, it won't be Sasquatch related, so I'll do that in a separate email, and I will do it um, sooner than later. But since I've been back from being away, I've just been pummeled, pummeled with uh, items to get done. So just a heads up, I will be sharing that that story, facts, very soon. It's a sad topic, but it's got to be shared, unfortunately, right? Not unfortunately, but it, excuse me, it has to be shared. Everybody's story needs to be heard. It's a very important thing. It's a very important thing is to be heard. And uh, the people who control and manipulate shit out of us, they've been suppressing people from being heard for a long time. Now, here's one that has no subject as a title of email. Steve, I've discovered in this valley I live in that the Sasquatch bring the kids down and school them on the human activity around a primitive camping area and the housing development next to it. They are schooling their children about us and their abilities that we do not possess around us. I was fortunate to stumble onto this and very fortunate to have their father and mother, due to my respect, sorry, I was fortunate to stumble onto this and very fortunate to have their father and mother, due to my respect, to trust me to a point. I'm dyslexic. I'm dyslexic. I do not understand this new technology. I'm 72 and I ain't got much time left. This is a very important information for the people. Please give me a call. They text me first to let me know you're going to call and when. Sincerely, amateur anthropologist. All right, sounds like we have someone else who has been in contact with these beings. And right now, I don't have time to phone I'm gonna, hopefully not going to forget, and you should possibly email me back again to give me a kick in the ass. All right? It's something that we should probably do live once you know, I'm set up here to do it. Sounds interesting to me. In the meantime, if you do e e email me back for a, a reminder, toss us a bone of a little more knowledge again, all right? Because you did find there. You emailed smooth and fine. Okay, I'm going to do one more. I'm going to go in. This title answers with a question mark. Hello, Stephen Community. My name is Bill, and I would like to possibly answer some of the questions and maybe lead to others. I could spend hours talking with the many experiences I've had all my life, but I would rather get to the point. I appreciate the knowledge I've been sharing. So now it's my turn. In the end, it's always good versus evil on this rock. But what I say is good, you may say is but what I say is good, you may say is evil. I grew up on a farm. 
and I hunt, and I believe in pest control. There are those saying that is evil. Crazy, yes, but still a fact. Now, who's to say the crazies don't take control one day, and now I'm the evil one, the one that needs exiled or destroyed. This behavior happens all over nature, from a bird being kicked out of its flock, a cow from the herd, or a savvy from its tribe. If the majority thinks something is evil, sick, or otherwise wrong, it's shunned or destroyed. To me, this is where it starts. Quote, know you're wrong, they don't exist, end quote. Then, quote, well, they do exist, but they're evil, end quote. Or, quote, well, they do exist, but they are retarded ape men, end quote. Either way, saying this puts them in the shun category, and we are taught this from the beginning. It's more easier to ridicule, shame, or simply ignore than to face some truths. And some truth are so fanciful, they are naturally unbelievable. Top that off, celebratizing drunken hillbillies, and you come to where we're at on the subject. The ones who wish to stay hidden, both earthly and unearthly, will manipulate anything and everything to stay so. From the halibut burying itself in the sand to sabbat cloaking, it's all just manipulating the things being seen by others. The drum is the heartbeat of Mother Earth. The drum beat is what binds and connects us all together as one. The songs guide and teach us. Listen to the elders, learn from them, and find your own song to sing. Respect must be earned when you're dealing with, yes, higher beings. You wouldn't walk up to a lion expecting respect. And just like that, and just like the lion, you can learn to live near or with the sabbe. It starts with standing your ground and letting the juveniles be juveniles. They are uni there are universal laws they must follow as we do. You'll know if one is just messing with you or pissed off. First off, you will never see it coming unless they want to make you suffer. Suffering being ripping your arm off rather than squashing your head like a grape. I'm more afraid of the rabid coyote than I am of Sasquatch. I've been blessed to be able to go around to schools and other events with my powwow drum, teaching some of the old ways. Life is all about the children. We must not let basic knowledge be forgotten. How to hunt, fish, skin, tan, make shelter, make fire. What plants to eat and grow, to be one with the land. I believe only the ones with this knowledge will be helped in the end by our forest brothers, for they will know how to take care of themselves, so the Sabbath will only need to lead them to safety. Stay strong, my family. Maybe one day Creator will loosen my tongue some more. Till then, much love. Bill Turley from Ohio. Sound like a wise man, Bill. Maybe, uh, hopefully, you want to share more. You'll do it. Then you'll share it here through me with everyone, all right? We want to soak it up and learn. It's important right now. It's important right now to learn. But anyway, um, I got to get going, you guys. But what I did the other day when I went for my hike, I actually let the GoPro run for quite a while, and I just carried it with me. And I was going to just let it rip in the background for you to randomly watch. But what I think I might do is I'll tack it on the end of this video. Because I do, there's sounds there, there's me commenting, or there's me pointing out things I'm seeing, and I don't know, maybe there might be some interesting things in there for the curious. Or not. So, either, uh, if you're just here for the emails and that's it, this is the end of them on this video, alright? And then from here down, I'm just going to bring you guys on the rest of my walk in the woods until the GoPro battery died. <laughs> and um, you can see where I've been running around for quite some time. And I feel so comfortable. I feel so comfortable in those in that forest, that mountain. I don't know what it is. I don't have to see game. I don't have to harvest game when I'm hunting there. But I have been hiking that mountain and other mountains for a long time. I know every single trail like it is the back of my hand. And I, I feel absolute serenity, comfort, ease, peace when I'm in this forest. Why? I don't know. I just do. And it attracts me. It pulls me in all the time, every chance I get. So anyways, I'll let that rip. And if you want to watch and walk with me, give her. Or not. But anyway, share my story at howtohunt.com. You got something you want to share with the people. Get it off your chest. It's a safe place to do it. And um, in the meantime, if you are 
curious about what is really going on on the planet today, I would strongly suggest um, to give these two channels some time. I have absolute confidence in these men. All right, there you go. Be back again. Big trees, big timber. You just big timber, big deer. See this old deer trail right here. How many years deer have been traveling down this sucker? Long, long time, right? Hundreds, hundreds of years. Deer have been traveling down this game trail right here longer than Canada's been a country easily. I guess that's not gonna say much though, is it? I was looking for deer antlers. That's why I'm going so slow and stopping on these benches. See, they've been chewing the tops of the willow off. Winter, not so juicy food. Man, I used to be able to find antlers 
I used to be able to fill up a backpack with antlers. I do it a day hike in here. I haven't found an antler on this mountain in a few years. Plus I'm walking by them and I'm blind as a bat. <laughs> I'll just let this camera run its course. Uh, whoever is interested can just walk along with me. Or not. But whoever is uh, just here for an email and that's it, there won't be any more. <laughs> right? So, there you go. But you can hike with me. See where I, where I love to go. Right there. Right there is where there is so much going on on that side it is absolutely ridiculous why i don't know That one would have hurt, wouldn't it? That one would have hurt. Getting hit in the head of that, falling down. I shot a real big buck. Just on top of that rock right there, a handful of years ago. A real true monster. Exciting day. Getting lower, closer to the bottom. <clears throat> This is where you find shed antlers. A little rock flat like this. 
big first growth fir in the sun. If there's a buck around, this is a typical spot where they're gonna, gonna lay up. Lots of food gets knocked off that big timber and hits the ground through the winter time. And they don't have to do much. Lay in the sun when it comes up, conserve energy, eat the food as it falls off the trees, the lichen and the branches. spot for bed right there. <clears throat> There's what you want. It's great big huge droppings like that. That's a big it's a big deer. You can see where the ground's mashed down up against this tree right here. It's definitely his bed. You see hairs in it. Yeah, where's his antlers? Better yet, where's he at? Yeah. Hold on a sec, dip my damn lace. leather hiking boots and I put two uh, pocket warmers in them and they're still warm I used to have some good boots like this buckles on them those are good ones so warm up Yeah. 
Look at that trail. <clears throat> I love these trails and the big old growth. Just so cool because the uh, there's no question about it. They are literally hundreds of years old. Look at it. I don't know if the camera's picking up or not. The trail goes right through there. Right down there. Realize how long game has been walking on the ground I'm standing on right here. Hunters before me, hundreds of years ago. Isn't that cool? It's cool to me anyway. A lot more deer traffic around here. But I don't see any antlers. your traffic underneath the big mature tree in the sun right in there let's check around it
Oh, there's that warren bed. Look at that one. Right under a big fir tree. That's been used all winter, I'm guessing. Yeah, where's his antlers? If it's a buck, who knows? I don't know. Got a bit of doe in her fawn. It's got quite the view, doesn't it? Good view to pass the winter days with. Come on. Where's your horns? Antlers, whatever you want to call them. Give me one. Just one for my hike.
God, I can't believe I'm not seeing one freaking shit antler. Gotta be kidding me, it's so depressing. <sighs> Look at this trail. Shit, that's a good game trail. Beauty. Bed right there. 